Over the last year, I've traveled far and wide across Russia, reporting on how the lives of ordinary people have been transformed since the beginning of the sanctions and the war in Ukraine. It just doesn't cease to amaze me. But it seems no matter where I go, some folks say it's never the right place. Too wealthy, too small, or some even go as far as to claim that I sugarcoat reality. So this time we're doing things a bit differently. We're heading to a place that holds the dubious title of Russia's poorest and most dangerous region, the Republic of Tuva. <laughs> This is uh, serious stuff. Uh, we've come to a uh, city suburb that's notorious for a high level of violent crimes. We didn't shy away from the grittier side of life here. We visited some of the roughest neighborhoods known as the favelas of Siberia. We spoke with people from all walks of life to find out how their standards of living have changed. Okay, средняя зарплата в Туве. Средняя зарплата примерно. We even traveled to a tiny village that was mourning a local man who was killed in combat in Ukraine. There's something else, something very important that I discovered along the way. Taking in this breathtaking nature and mind-blowing views, I realized we must always see beyond stereotypes and never take labels at face value. Even in places labeled as poorest or most dangerous, there's beauty, strength, and stories that deserve to be told. Welcome to Tuva. Hey, quick heads up before we dive back in. Many people have asked how they can support my work. Well, the best way is to become a patron. You'll find a ton of exclusive content on my Patreon page, including videos with director's commentary, behind the scenes outtakes, and much more content that I don't share on my YouTube channel. And for those of you tuning in from Russia, I've got Boosty, which is basically the Russian twin of Patreon, but with content tailored for Russian audience. Big thanks for your support. Tuva is nestled in southern Siberia, right on the border with Mongolia. It's not particularly large, and its population, a mere 340,000 people, is scattered across the region's stunning landscapes. Tuva may not be Russia's furthest outpost, but make no mistake, it's certainly remote and in some ways feels profoundly isolated. You see, the formidable Sayan Mountains act like a colossal wall, cutting Tuva off from the rest of the country. Now here's the kicker. There is no railway connection between Tuva's capital, Kazil, and Moscow. That's a rare situation in a country crisscrossed by thousands of miles of railway. So your options for reaching this secluded pocket of Siberia are limited. A lengthy drive, which we had no time for, or a short flight. <laughs> Well, this is not exactly a bustling aviation hub, but uh, you know what? Uh, there is something I really enjoy about these uh, tiny provincial airports where everything is a stone's throw away. I mean, you can literally stroll from the plane into right into the terminal. It's all part of the charm. The first thing that caught my eye when I walked into the terminal was a billboard featuring the region's most wanted criminals. Tuva is notorious for its higher-than-average rates of violent crimes, including homicides. On the very day we landed, someone actually stabbed a girl right in front of the local administration building in the city center. Thank goodness I wasn't alone on this trip. I was with my old school buddy Misha, who knows the lay of the land thanks to the friends and relatives he has here. While in Tuva, Misha and I also visited the Old Believers, descendants of Russian Orthodox Christians who broke away from the official church in the 17th century and fled to Siberia. Don't forget to check out that video too. So we're here in the city of Kazil, the capital of Tuva, and this is where we begin our quest to find out why this region is considered to be the most dangerous in Russia. Oh, and by the way, uh, you see the stela, this uh, monument behind me? It marks the geographical center 
of Asia. How cool is that? I mean, I didn't know this, but we're officially in the heart of Asia, setting out to explore this remote and lesser known part of Russia. Honestly, Kazil is unlike anywhere else. Downtown, it's all glitz and glamour. Flashy cars, stunning women strolling along new sidewalks, or cooling off in the Yenisei River. But stray off the main streets and the vibe shifts. You might bump into some rough characters, even aggressive drunks. Heck, even a local musician threatened to break my camera just because I filmed him without paying. Tuva is, let's say, one of the least Russian regions in Russia. Only about 10% of the people here are ethnic Russian, and they mainly stick to the original capital and a few rural communities that Orthodox Christians set up back in the 17th century. The local Tuvans have their own culture, language, and religion. Actually, this place was part of China until 1911, when it broke free during China's own shakeup. Tuva quickly cozied up to communism and became tight with the USSR. And get this, Tuva was the first nation to declare war on Nazi Germany following its invasion of the Soviet Union. During World War II, they sent over food, clothes, and troops to bolster the Red Army. And by 1944, Tuva was officially USSR territory. Well, Kazil is a crazy cocktail of cultures, times, and faiths. I mean, we've got an old Lenin statue, a newly erected Orthodox church, and a giant Buddhist monument that overlooks the city, and these quirky shamanism installations scattered here and there. And on top of everything, uh, there is a giant billboard featuring none other than the uh, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu, who was born here. So, I mean, it's a, it's a head-spinning mix, but uh, somehow it all weaves together into this uh, fascinating tapestry uh, that is Kazil. Russia's defense minister, Sergei Shoigu, is hands down the most famous Tuvan on the planet right now. Oh, and you know those iconic photos of Vladimir Putin vacationing in the Siberian wilderness? Those were taken in Tuva during their getaway trips before the whole Ukraine conflict began. For someone who comes from a small and, let's be honest, disadvantaged region, Shoigu's carved out quite the career and still commands respect from his fellow Tuvans. Oh, кстати, look at the portrait of Shoigu. Shoigu, yeah. Is there a relationship between him? Yes, very relationship. The Tuvans really love him? Yes, because he was... Driving around central Kazil has been a treat. The place looks well kept and has a feel that people actually care about it. But now let's move to another part of the Tuvan capital that, uh, well, isn't exactly known for its safety. This is uh, serious stuff. Uh, we've come to a uh, city suburb that's notorious for a high level of violent crimes. Stabbings and uh, uh, street fights are not uncommon here. And actually, our friends try to talk us out of you know, poking the bear, so to speak. Uh, and literally no one, no one agreed to take us here except for this uh, courageous driver who asked me not to show his face. Uh, so yeah, let's go explore this place that uh, bears the unnerving, unofficial title of the Siberian favelas. No sugarcoating it, this area is a bit of a mess. Unpaved roads, beat up cars, stray dogs and some shady characters wandering around. We even spotted a couple of guys who'd clearly started happy hour a bit early. Alcohol is a touchy subject in Tuva, and trust me, visiting a local liquor store is quite an experience. Now, well, Tuva has the toughest liquor curfew in Russia. Uh, you know, say in Moscow, you can uh, buy alcohol up until 11 p.m., but here, uh, they only sell alcohol in stores uh, from 11 a.m. To 3 p.m. So it's a tiny, tiny window of opportunities 
Uh, yeah, quite the contrast, yes. You'll find many Kazil's liquor stores looking like mini fortresses with fences and metal locks. Oh, and don't expect to grab a beer from the fridge yourself. The shopkeeper's gotta buzz you in. By the way, there is a surprising amount of European beer on offer. Didn't see that coming. We spent a few hours walking around this tough neighborhood, hopping from one shop to another, and even had small, somewhat awkward interactions. Правда говорят, что этот район самый опасный в Казили. Серьезно? Да, вам нормально живется. Нормально? But you know what? In the end, nothing bad happened to us. Sure, you could find trouble here like you could anywhere else if you're out looking for it. But mostly what we saw were people grinding it out, trying to make ends meet and build a better future for their families. Потребление алкоголя. Если человек выпивший, то он становится опасным в любой части вообще мира, любого шара. Ну, пока таких людей мы не встретили. Ну и хорошо же. Это опасный район? Ну, сейчас уже нет. Сейчас уже нет? А. Все, всех опасных людей уже пересадили, да? Человека Вагнера отправили с It's true that many Tuvans have chosen to sign a contract with Sergei Shoigu's ministry. $2,000 that Russian soldiers earn per month in Ukraine is one hell of a sum by local standards. But money might not be the only reason they choose to fight. We'll dive into this later in the video. My friend's relatives own a tire shop here in Kazil. Uh, and you know, with cars constantly pulling in and out throughout the day, I thought, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity to uh, take the pulse of the community's financial health. Люди часто приезжают на новых автомобилях или скорее стараются, знаешь, старые ремонтировать? Да, всякие, как бы по-разному. Можно сказать, 50 на 50. И новых хватает, и старых хватает. А так по клиентам как вообще есть ощущение, не знаю, люди так же живут или может победнее, знаешь, по прижимисти стали. Ничего не меняется, конечно. Деньги есть все равно у людей. Деньги есть, конечно. Well, I really love their slogan. So pull in uh, with no fuss, uh, talk loud and clear, and get out fast and enjoy our service. So I mean, it's kind of straightforward, but uh, but I like it. Нет проблем вот с импортными там станками, комплектующими, какими-то запчастями, которые вы в работе используете. Комплектующие. Угу. Комплектующие. Ну, он не ломается просто работает. Немецкий станок просто не ломается. Да, он просто не ломается. By the way, it only costs 10 bucks to change all four tires here. At first, I thought they were kidding me, but then I saw the prices handwritten on the wall in chalk. Статистики, то один из самых бедных регионов России. Вот как-то, не знаю, вы это ощущаете, живя здесь, что здесь не так много денег у людей, что ли? Да я бы не сказал, нормально, в принципе. Да? Да ну как, у кого-то они есть, у кого-то их и нету. All right, it's time to leave the hustle and bustle of Kazil behind and venture into the wild expense of the Siberian steppe. So we're actually on the hunt for nomads who carry on traditions of their ancestors from hundreds of years ago. Thanks to the Endless Step, this place has been home to nomads for centuries. And if you really want to understand local culture, you must get out of town. Thanks to Misha's connections, we met a genuine nomad family. This wasn't some tourist attraction. Take a look at this man's hands. It's clear he earns his living through hard work, herding sheep and shearing them with rusty metal scissors. Как у вас жизнь? Все вас устраивает? Конечно. Конечно, 
А вот вы слышали, что против России очень много санкций ввели из-за войны на Украине? Вот это на вас как-то влияет вообще? Что-то об этом знаете, ну, слышите? Конечно, влияет. А что? Перевернуть мы в одну Россию. Коснулась, да, пани. Вначале было вот по запчастям, вот на иномарке, а так не особо. Мы здесь жили и будем жить дальше. Мы же все-таки в России живем, а Россия самодостаточная страна. Может, кому-то там iPhone дорогой станет. For hundreds and hundreds of kilometers in all directions. That's insane. You might think these people barely make ends meet, but don't jump to conclusions just yet. Part right next to the yurt was the owner's Toyota Land Cruiser. And the yurt, as traditional as it looks, has many modern touches. Это технология, это солнечная панель? Ой, ну круто, круто. Много дает энергии. Ну, хватит. А зачем вам электричество? Телевизор. Inside, I quickly found a TV and a smartphone tucked behind the yurt's ribs. Yep, they have phone reception here and even the internet. По вибру звонят. Это уровень. По вибру просто набирают. Well, I'm telling you, this place is a crazy mishmash of different eras. So, here you have uh, horse droppings. Over here, there is a wheel that could have come straight from the 19th century. But if you look a bit further, you'll spot a satellite dish uh, that that is supplying television to the only family, to the only house in what seems to be hundreds of kilometers. Yeah, <laughs> crazy, isn't it? There were a couple of kids running around the yurt, and I first thought about how bored they probably were living out here. Boy, I was wrong. These kids have the entire step as a playground. No fences, no borders. And you should have seen their eyes light up when they found out they'd met an actual YouTuber in flesh and blood. I always wanted to look at a camera with a drone, and I always wanted to be in an interview, and be in the news, and something like that. And be in YouTube? Yes. Interestingly, these boys spoke Russian much more fluently than their native language. Вы на каком языке лучше говорите, на русском или на тувинском? На русском. Я хочу выучить тувинский язык хорошо. Ты хочешь выучить его? Да. То есть пока ты на русском говоришь лучше, чем на тувинском? Да. As some Tuvan parents explained to me, they're losing the battle to YouTube and other social media. Kids watch content in Russian because, well, there is just not much available in Tuva. But let's get back to our yurt, where I'm trying to figure how much this nomad actually makes. As often happens in Russia, it's really hard to tell, since people might have both official and unofficial sources of income. But get this. He says he can sell a sheep for around 60-70 bucks, and he's open to hiring someone to help watch the herd for $250 a month. The thing is, in a region notorious for sky-high unemployment, it's surprisingly hard to find help here. А почему не хватает рабочих рук? Где работники все? Ну вот, пусть их смотри, деньги выдают, каждому хватает. Well, let me explain. Our herder blames unemployment benefits for the shortage of workers. For some folks, it's just easier to live off unemployment checks, around 150 bucks a month, than to take on a tough job like this. А ему это нахер не надо. Ему проще вот с государства деньги получать, да, как по безработице, либо что-то такое. Ну и плюс дополнительно ходить, зарабатывать неформально. Besides, there is a way to earn way more money in Tuva. Although, this source of income comes with a risk. А в армию кто-нибудь идет служить, контракт подписывает? Подписывает, наверное, не знаю я. Только запас Украины сейчас заберет, наверное. Вас думаете, тоже могут мобилизовать? Ну, вот этим, наверное. 
Летний перерыв, наверное. Торт пойдем, Торт вы, он пургадал. А не доверьте, пенчавый не. Пенчавый кажут, ты. You might have heard in the Western media that a higher than average number of men had been drafted from places like Tuva during the 2022 mobilization campaign. While the exact numbers are under wraps, it's worth mentioning that a fair number of guys here had already chosen military careers even before the Ukraine conflict started. This was something we realized when we drove through a small village that happened to be mourning a local hero who died in Ukraine, Arla. Well, here's a quick backstory. So uh, we were researching this trip and my friend Misha, he was scrolling through social media and stumbled upon a brief post about a memorial that was set up in honor of a soldier, fighter who uh, fell in Ukraine last year. The soldier was from Tuva. And uh, there weren't many details uh, apart from an image of this memorial and uh, the name of the village. So, uh, you know, we've decided to come here on the off chance that we, you know, might see relatives and just, you know, dig a little bit deeper into the story. The survival skills Arlan earned while growing up in Tuva's harsh environment, combined with his passion for hunting, made him the sniper every unit wanted to have. Although he donned a uniform at a young age, he never officially joined Russia's regular army. The news of his death hit his family like a ton of bricks. Как бы спокойно поехали, и мы тоже как-то привыкли же, вот 18 лет, да, мы тоже как-то привыкли, что у него все нормально, служба идет, он всегда возвращается, всегда выходит на связь. И вдруг приходит, поступает звонок мне, Arlan was killed in the spring of 2022 during the Battle of Papasna in Ukraine. I was eager to hear what his family had to say about their cherished son and brother who met his end thousands of kilometers away from home, fighting in the war between Russia and Ukraine. При этом, чтобы все знали, что не только вот наша страна же, она многонациональная, да, вот именно. Да. И столько как бы национальности стали, помогают. Throughout my travels, one lesson keeps hitting home. Always take labels with a grain of salt and be wary of stereotypes. Tuva might bear some dubious titles like most dangerous and poorest. But let me tell you, this place is so much more than that. You'll find hardworking people grinding out a living day in and day out, nurturing their dreams and cherishing what's close to their hearts. In a nutshell, there is an entire world here that completely shatters any preconceived notions. So the next time you hear about a dangerous or poor place, remember Tuva and think twice.